Welcome to Bunny Fish Crafts. I'm your host Heather, known as Bunny Fish on Ravelry Instagram and YouTube. Today is Monday the 27th of April 2015. And this is episode 126, The In-Between. Grab some sticks and string and come sit with me. I feel like all of the all the little things that are going on are kind of like in between. They're not in one category or the other. Like Gabriel's in school, but it's more like summertime school. You know what I mean? Like once you hit May, school always got a little bit, a little bit less intense because big tests happen and then nothing after that. A lot of, um, he has a field trip coming up this week and I don't know. I just feel like there's a lot of summery things going on at school, which is not bad. And, um, they're counting down the days to the end of the school year. I think there are like 21 or something. Not very many school days left. Um, and Mara's like in between being a little and being an actual person. I don't know. Every day she just seems more like a, a person until about five o'clock hits. And then she's right back to being a little, like a, a toddler sort of thing. I feel very in between right now. Anyway, we have a stitch marker giveaway. Um... And from LFK Stitch Markers sent along stitch markers for me and also stitch markers for you. And I have been using the stitch markers she sent to me a lot and I love them. And there was a thread in the group, which is locked now. The prompt was to go to the store, LFK Stitch Markers at storemv.com and look at the current stock and say which was your favorite. So, um... 18 of you did, so I drew from 2 to 19, and the winner was number 7, Q Mama, Shelly. So Shelly, please let me know which um, which stitch marker set you would like, either the pink zebra or the black and blue, well the silver and blue set, and send me your mailing address and I will get them out to you shortly. I'm really glad that so many of you enjoyed Anne's stitch markers, like the there, she makes really cute things, and um, so far, highly functional. I'm still, none of mine have um, in any way been mangled, and I'm rough on my stitch markers. They have been to, we went to the zoo this week, so a stitch marker went with me to the zoo, and they go with me to work every night that I work, and around the house, and outside when I'm watching the kids play, so... They've been holding up really well. If you um, if you were on the fence about buying some, waiting to see if you would win, I would definitely say go buy some. They're really, really good stitch markers. So, finished objects, I have a couple. I finished, super excited about this, the Crib D's socks, patterned by Fiona Bennett. And... Last week I did the um, half of this leg and the entirety of this leg. And these are the stitch markers um, that Anne sent for me or that I chose of the sets because they're so pretty and black and green and excellent um, for showing you progress and also for using for knitting. The yarn in this project is... Science Monkey Mercantile Faraday Sock in the colorway Jovian Princess. Love it. Love the colors. And I'm really, really, really glad that this project is off the needles. Not because I don't like the project, because I do. Well, I like the product. And it's not the fault of anything in the, in the project. The yarn is lovely to work with and it is lovely to look at. The pattern is a little bit of something, but not super complicated, but I feel like the pattern was an in-between because it wasn't just mindless, I had to pay attention a little bit, but it also wasn't so mindful that it kept my attention all the time. And um, it went really, really fast. The second leg I did in a day. I think because it's a really simple pattern. I just wasn't in the mood for 
what it was. But I recommend the pattern. It looks really, really cool with variegated pooling-ish yarns, breaks it up a little bit, has um, adds texture to the fabric, and it's simple. It's nice. I think it would look good in pretty much any yarn, honestly. Like for self-striping, it would offset your stripes because it's a little bit biasing. So I think it would look cool in anything. Maybe if I ever make this pattern again, I would do it in self-striping just to see how it offsets the stripes. That would be kind of cool. So, you know, when I'm in the mood for something that's an in-between, not quite mindless, but not mindful either. But these socks are finished. Yay! The second finished object is something that I hadn't started last week, but I had mentioned maybe wanting to make. So I made a G's Great Owl out of the leftovers from the baby blanket that I finished last week. The blue color is Robin Egg, um, which is Red Heart TLC, and the brown is Coffee from Red Heart Super Saver. And the white is the, the um, Karen One Pound, or was it Lion Brand Baby something? Whatever, that huge skein that I said was never going to go away. Well, it's now like this big, a ball this big. And I've just been using it as much as I can for things. So, um, oh, it's my own pattern and I can't hold it. Uh, modifications. I used a size G hook and I held a single strand of yarn instead of holding three strands together and a size N hook, I think is what the pattern calls for. I also ran out of the, the yarn. I knew that I wanted to use as much yarn as possible, so I did the eyes first, even though it's um, in the pattern it's written as one of the last things, but I wanted the eyes to match the body. So I got up to here and I think that I, I, I ran out of the, the coffee. You can see I didn't finish the round right here. I had to go to Robin's egg. Oh, I just had a tail pop out. Fix that. Um, so I did the eyes first and then I worked all the way up and then there's, there are a few rounds where you like shape on either side to make the little pointy bits that owls have. And um, I didn't get to that because I ran out of yarn. So this is about three rounds short of what it's supposed to be. But I think it's super cute. And I'm glad that I made it. Because there is no longer any of this TLC in my stash, which is kind of exciting because I've used it for several projects. And um, it, it's fine. It's a fine color. It's just, I would like to use other yarn for things. And I no longer have the coffee in my stash, but I'm sure I will because I use the Red Heart Super Saver coffee in, um, it's kind of my go-to acrylic brown. So I'm sure it will come into the stash later at some point. But right now, that's one more acrylic skein out of my stash. I, I have an in-between project too, really, like today is just very in-between for me. Um, I'm going to count it as a finished object and not show it next week because here is Robert's second sock. So let's see, this is where I was last week. And I did all of this and I am so close to finished. I have two, four, five rounds um, left of the cuff and then the bind off that I use has a setup round so I have five rounds in the ribbing one setup round and then the bind off so seven rounds to go on the sock I'm not going to save it for next week and show you it'll probably be finished by the time I finish editing the yarn that I'm using is 716 knit, 716 sock in the My Hormones Don't Rage colorway, which was a club colorway from the Daria Club. And I think you can see the, um, oh yeah, you can see the ribbing 
graduation very well on the side of this sock. Which I am quite I quite enjoyed doing for this sock. I might do it for the kids the rest of the kids' socks this year. Or I might just play with all sorts of ribbing patterns on them this year. I don't know. The pattern is the child tube sock recipe by me. And I have started um actually a long time ago, I started doing the numbers for uh, the paid for pattern for it. I just have to go in and finish inputting the numbers. It's a lot of math that goes into it. So Christina, I saw your question and I didn't mean to ignore you. It's just, I didn't get back to you because sometimes I fail at getting back to people on Ravelry. Uh, I have an actual work in progress that I started this week and I'm pretty excited about it. So what do you do when it's springtime and you don't really have to worry about winter anymore? You make some color work mittens, right? Obviously. I started a pair of Norwegian Totoro mitts by Brella for myself. I actually made this exact same pattern in the exact same yarn for my sister last year. Was it? I can't remember. Sometime in the cold. But um, I had enough yarn left over and I love my neighbor Totoro. It is my favorite Miyazaki Studio Ghibli film. Love it. And I finished her mitts and I really wanted a pair for myself. And, um, and I was like, well, I probably have enough. I might run a little bit tight on my background color. But it should be good, and if I run a little tight on it, there are some places where I can um, tweak the pattern so I don't have to worry about using background color. Anyway, do you want to see the project now that I've talked about it forever? Here are the um, here are the the backs of the mitts, so you can see it says Totoro. Um, I knit the color work with both yarns in my left hand. I have one over my thumb and one over my forefinger and it matters which color you have where. So for me, I need to have the main color over my thumb and the background color over my pointer finger. I had this, this band, um, both of my yarns, by the way, are Knitpicks Stroll Sport. This one, is the wave colorway and this one is the stream colorway. Well, the stream heather and the wave heather. Well, if you see this band, it says stream heather, but it was around the wave colorway and this says over thumb. So I couldn't remember if I wanted the background or the foreground color over my thumb, but I saw that and it was on this color. So I worked the first two rounds of the color work with the background color over my thumb. And I was looking at it and the, the stitches just weren't popping that much. So to show you what I'm talking about, I switched it when I got to the second half, which is actually supposed to be the, um, the when I did the third round. The second half is supposed to actually be the palm side, but I switched which one was which because you can see on this palm one, those stitches are less, you can tell what it says less, I guess. Um, but on this one, it's a little more clear that it says Totoro. So just to, just to let you know it matters. It matters which finger or which hand you hold it in. Um, I, let's see, what else? Uh, I'm pretty happy with the way that they're knitting up and I split for the thumb and I did not do the thumb as the pattern says. You're supposed to break yarn and stuff and I did not. I put the, um, I put the stitches for the thumb onto a bobby pin. I like bobby pins for holding stitches if it's not a lot of stitches because bobby pins have those ridges. They don't slide out very easily. I mean, clearly I could slide it off if I wanted to, but with just 
working. It doesn't slide around a lot. And then um, I didn't read the pattern for what you were supposed to do when you started working in the round again. But I just did a two color cast on. I don't know what it's called. I could look it up. I might look it up, but I probably won't. Um, I used it when I cast on all the way back to episodes like one and two. When I cast on that huge double knit shawl scarf thing, um, that's the cast on that I used. And I'm pretty sure I talked about it there. But I did that so that I wouldn't have to break the yarn. I wouldn't have to weave in those ends. My thought is I'm probably going to run out of this yarn or run very close on it. And the thumbs in the pattern are color work, but I'm probably just going to use this main dark color to do the thumbs. We'll see. Um, and also I just wanted to make sure I didn't have to weave in yarns or carry yarns across that cast on area. So using the two color cast on worked really well because both colors got carried across. I'm, I'm super excited for these to be finished even though I'm not going to be able to wear them. And I'm not making mine convertible. I made Amanda's convertible. I'm not making mine convertible because I can just take off mittens if I don't want to wear mittens. Um, I have fingerless mitts that I can wear instead of mittens. So I have fingerless mitts that I can wear under my mittens and just take off the mittens. So I'm not making these convertible. Also because then I would have to worry about running out of yarn and stuff. And um, this is two days worth of work. Sport weight works up really, really fast compared to fingering weight yarn. Even in color work. I think I am a little under halfway through with the color work portion of the knitting. So it should be super fast, super quick. Um, the instructions on the pattern are really, really clear and it is free or it was free when I got it. I don't know now. I think it's still free. I have a barn raising square. These two colors, it's two different yarns. Um, and they were both from Lindsay and I did not keep the tags out because that would have been smart. But I told you the colors last week, I believe. So these are two colors from Lindsay and they are lovely. I actually ran a little bit short so the black border is a little bit larger on this one than it normally is, but I think it will look fine in the blanket and no one will even notice. It turned out beautifully. And I have eight, um, what are they called? Hexapuffs. I have eight Hexapuffs this week, which brings my total up to 276 Hexapuffs. Oh, and that was Barn Raising Square number 20. So we are five away from a photograph of all of them. So let's show you my hex buffs. This one is the Marigold Gen um, Black Magic colorway. And I still have a decent portion of this yarn. So I'm not sure, I might save it because I am considering for the future another sock yarn blanket, um, different than all the patterns I'm using now, considering it for the future. This is the Wacky Windmill in Purple Pie Man, also from Lindsay. The Marigold Gen was not from Lindsay. That was from Josh. Red Heart Heart and Soul in Christmas Colorway. And this is a celebratory X-Buff. See, it's got the, the little bit of pearl pearling going on. This is Regia Silk from Ginger, A Free Spirit, a celebratory hex buff. This is the purple stripes that I used to make my sister's um, panda out of. I think it's just called purple stripes. This is Croissac FX Clover Colors. This is yarn from Becca. And this is yarn from Lindsay. It is Dream and Color in Chili. Very lovely. 
I also brought over the um, the official beginning of the Hexapuff blanket. I every week when I actually work on it, um, I put together what I call hexi pods, which are groups of three of the hexapuffs. And then I also attach a hexapod to the main body of the blanket. And there are tails everywhere because I use the tails to attach hexapuffs together. The way I'm doing it is I'm attaching the corners. So you see that it's open there, but the corners are all attached. And I wanted to show you the first strip of the blanket. So it is going to be as wide as queen size bed. That was my goal. And Gabriel has claimed this blanket. He's very excited about it. And when I laid it out, he was super excited about this hexapuff, which is probably my favorite. It's a little zombie face, which I designed based off of the Stockinette Zombies logo, their original one. This, um, and then last week I also started building up. So now I know how wide I want it to be, but now I need to know how tall I want it to be. And this little zombie is going to be the very middle hexapuff. So I'm going to, last week I built up. So this week, see, that's the line. So last week I built up. So this week I'm going to build down so I can figure out how tall I need it to be. And I'm trying to decide if I want to make like half hexapuffs things to fill in these sides or if I don't mind if they are, um, if they have those holes on the side. I haven't decided yet. What do you think? Do you guys have an opinion? What do you think that would look like aesthetically? I also haven't looked at people's projects to decide what I think about that. But that's why these are not attached to this one. Yeah, that's the Hexapuff blanket. But I have a huge bag full of Hexipods, and I have this container and this bag with Hexapuffs waiting to be made into Hexapods. Let's hop back to works in progress really quick because I forgot one. It's not really a work in progress, but only kind of. Because it is the cast on of a pair of fingerless mitts. The yarn is Maverick Yarn Yarns in the colorway last summer. So there's their tag, and it is beautiful blue and green. Allegria, who won the um, steampunk knit along, um, and I, we conversed and she picked something handmade for my stash so she and she got to pick the yarn which is this and I am making her mitts which I won't be showing you every week on the podcast because they are a design pattern. I knit um, I knit the first sample and loved the way they turned out. You guys never saw them. Maybe you saw the yarn at one point but I don't think so um, and I have misplaced them. I have pictures of the first sample, so that's not really a problem, but I misplaced them, so I want to um, knit them again to make sure all my numbers are correct, and then um, have test knitters and, and then get it out, because I really like the pattern, and my friends really liked the pattern when I was working on it. So that will be soonish. So if you want to test knit some fingerless mitts, it uh, uses fingering weight less than a standard skein of yarn and um, uses U.S. size 1 knitting needles and I should have the pattern next couple weeks. Um, also, test knitters are the most amazing people ever because so many mistakes. I make them, people I test knit for make them, just little errors that you're, because you go on autopilot. So I love test knitters so much. All right, I have something new. We went by Joann's and I had a coupon and I've been looking at this yarn, which is Peyton's Croy Socks in the gray marl colorway. It's just, I mean, it's not a solid, but it's kind of a solid color. <laughs> and um, I don't know why I wanted it. I have no idea. 
But every time that I've been in Joann's, I'm like, oh, that's so pretty. What am I going to use it for? No idea. And I only bought a single skein because I just wanted the yarn and I didn't have anything in mind for it. So it's only 50 grams, which is 166 yards of this heavy fingering weight. I don't know what I'm going to make with it, but I really just wanted it. I don't know. I might buy another skein eventually. Who knows? Not the most exciting thing ever, but I really, really wanted it. What I am reading this week is a huge book. It is called This Is All, The Pillow Book of Cordelia Ken, and it is by Aiden Chambers. It is about 800 pages, I believe. 805. Um, I read this book before, a very long time ago. I think that I started it when I was very early in pregnancy with Gabriel. So I don't remember all of the, de the details, but I remember the big things that happened in the story. And when I read it, I read it in three days in between, you know, working and stuff in school. And I I just love this book so much. It's one of those books that you want to crawl inside and become part of it. It's written in a um, it's written in a really cool way. I don't remember all of it, but instead of chapters, it's in books. So it doesn't it doesn't have chapter breaks, but it has um, it has little sections. Some are longer than others. Some are several pages. Some are part of a page. Um, and the, the idea is um, Cordelia is writing a pillow book to her daughter because she's pregnant um, and she's quite far along. She's to the, she's in the third trimester to that stage where you can't really do a lot except kind of sit around and be uncomfortable. So she's writing this pillow book to her daughter using... Um, She's telling a specific story, the story of, I believe, how she um, how she met her daughter's father and the beginnings of their relationship. Um, so she's writing what she remembers, and then she's also taking pages from her journal and inserting them in. And um, sometimes she just goes off on a, a side tangent about something, like she talks about Shakespeare a little bit and talks about trees a little bit because they went to an arbitorium. Um, it, it just goes off in little tangents, which I love. Um, the first, the first book, first pillow book is pretty straightforward, but I remember one of the pillow books, I'll talk about it more when I get there. I think one of them is written completely, um, in, in like a, in poetry, sort of. Is that, is that called poetry? It's written in poetry? I don't remember. And I, and one of them, I know for sure, um, it's written where you read all of the even number pages first or all of the odd number pages first and then read, go back to the beginning of it and read all of the other pages first. So you read only the right hand pages first and then the left hand or whatever. I can't remember because I'm not there yet, but it's a really, really really good book. I am super enjoying it. Um, again, this time through, even though I'm not very far in it, I'm only on page 73. So uh, not quite 10%, but close. Um, oh, I can't wait to, I, I'm having a hard time reading it because I want to read it and I want to get through it and I can't wait to read all of the things and, um, watch all of the characters unfold because there are, I, there's a lot that I forgot. Like I forgot about specific characters. I just remembered the overall story arc. Um, so it's fun meeting the new characters and I want to just sit down and read the entire thing, but then it will be over. <laughs> so I've only been reading about 20 to 30 pages a night. I just started reading it over the weekend. Oh, I just like this book so much, and um, I will talk about it again next week. 
when I've actually read more. It's set in England, and um, Cordelia, the, the start of the story is when she's 15, and when she's writing the story, she's 20. So there's a huge, um, this book covers a long time period of her life, but it's all written in a very short time period of her life. It's very, very good. It's, um, yeah, I mean, it's not anything that I've been reading recently. It's not paranormal. It's not dystopian. It's not post-apocalyptic. It's just the story of a girl. And I'm so excited to be reading it again. And it's kind of funny. Um, I saw, I bought this book during one of my, um, one of my mall trips with my best friend in high school and I kept looking at it. Actually, I didn't. I looked at this book during several of our mall trips, but it was expensive and it was really, really big. And normally that would be like it being really big would be, um, a mark in its favor because I would rather buy a larger book that would take me longer to read than buy a really thin book at that time because limited funds and things. Um, so I kept looking at it and looking at it and looking at it and I didn't buy it in high school. And then I went to college and I finally, I saw it at the Barnes and Noble when I went there and I felt nostalgic for Mary Lee and I was like, oh, this is a book that we were going to buy and we never did. So I bought it. And then it sat around on my shelf for a couple years. And then I finally picked it up and, um, Oh, it's just so good. And then I loaned my copy to my sister and her dog ate my book. So this is my second copy of this book. And it's just, it's so good. It's so good. I'm excited to be reading it again. Um, I was also reading the fourth book in the Mortal Instruments series, City of Fallen Angels by... Cassandra Clare, but again, it had to go back to the library because someone had it on hold. So I think I'm just going to put that book on pause and not re it for my holds list because I clearly wasn't super into it at that moment. Um, I'm going to get back to it in probably a month or so so that I don't completely forget everything that I already read and had to reread it, but I'm going to focus on This Is All by Aiden Chambers for a while. Um, obviously, because it's a pretty long book. And then when I'm getting, when I get to like the last hundred pages, I'll decide if I want to read another book before I put that book on hold or if I want to put that book on hold. I have a few miscellaneous things also. Just really quick, um, I finished, so my sock iron blanket, the one that I finished in November, I finished it basically, except I had about seven ends that I just never wove in. So I wove them in this week because I washed my blanket for the first time since I finished it. Um, I washed mine in the washing machine, washing machine, and then I hang it to dry or lay it flat to dry. I took it outside and I put it over a, um, a chair. A large chair and what are they called Andorada chairs or something like that I don't know um, I put it over that chair and over the railing of my porch so that it was kind of it wasn't hanging a lot just hanging in a few places so kind of flat kind of hanging mostly so air could get through and when I went to pick it up I noticed a hole in my blanket it looks like somehow I knit some stitches but I didn't catch things properly or something I don't know three stitches in one row and three stitches in the row above were not connected but there was no broken yarn anywhere I'm not sure how it happened so I took a, a length of yarn and um, and wove it in on one side I took my crochet hook and re made those pieces, re-knit re those pieces until it was just one, um, one stitch that wasn't attached to things. And 
um, attached it to the string that I had attached to my blanket and then woven that end. So I fixed that and since I had my needle out anyway and the blanket in my lap I just woven those seven ends because that's ridiculous and just shows you how much I don't weave in ends. But I did weave in all of the ends of all of the projects that I finished this week because I had my needle out anyway. And then I mended a sock because the first pair of socks that I knit for myself, they are, um, it was spiral stripes of a Peyton's Croy yarn and a Serenity sock yarn. I, um, I went to put them on last week and I took them out of my drawer and I looked at one and I was like, wait, is that a hole? And it was. The, um, the nylon thread was still running through the stitch, but the wool had worn away. So it was kind of a hole, but kind of not a hole because the stitch was still there, but it was only one strand instead of the plies of wool and everything. So I hurried up and fixed that too. And I also fixed a teddy bear that um, I got in high school. My then boyfriend bought it for me. And it has since been passed on to my children. And children are hard on things. So it just popped a seam in the back. It was a really quick fix. And now I kind of feel like I should mend that reusable shopping bag that I didn't mend during Mend It March, but um, I haven't committed to that. It'll get done when it gets done. Anyway, I hope you made something fantastic with your sticks and string. I am super close to finishing this sock, um, so it should you should have seen a picture. Um, I will see you next week. Bye!